And Christina, why don't you just let everyone know when we're recording? Yep. Okay. Thumbs up. We are live, everyone. So just to kick us off, I want to introduce myself. My name is Julia Ryan. I work in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I live in Jamaica Plain. I was born and raised here. And I have been working in our office for the past four years, focusing on programs that support local artists. Um, the idea behind the work I do is, you know, trying to really put an emphasis toward making sure artists in Boston have um, programs and people in City Hall that are supportive of their work in a lot of different ways, whether that's through um, funding for projects or um, technical assistance, you know, kicking off kind of your artistic career or um, kind of any of the nitty gritty around just figuring out how to be a human being living and existing and creating work in Boston. So our office runs a, a bunch of different programs to help folks figure out um, things from finding space for an event to housing, grants, um, professional development, and we have a ton of public art programs as well. So I will have my colleague Christina at the end of this um, presentation just drop um, a few links into the chat of things that would be helpful for everyone to be aware of uh, related to our programs and what's going on in our office. But today we're gonna be talking about the Opportunity Fund, which is a wonderful grant that our office has been running for the past four years, um, ever basically since I started in this role. And the focus of the Opportunity Fund is really on helping artists fund projects that are meaningful to them, um, and doing that successfully in Boston. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And we're excited to share this all with you because we are coming up on our annual application deadline, which is June 4th. So we're trying to make sure people have all the information they need to get um, their applications in before we have our upcoming deadline. So like I said, this is a grant from our office, the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. So the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture is our city of Boston's arts and culture focused department. So we, again, we focus on lots of ways of supporting artists. We have programs that also help the public engage in the arts. We have a lot of focus on public arts as well. And we are the, um, the city's department that is implementing our, or kind of overseeing the implementation of our citywide cultural plan, which is called Boston Creates. So Boston Creates was, um, was a planning process basically that was run about five years ago um, and really kind of brought all Bostonians together through um, community meetings, through surveying, through lots of different processes, kind of engaging the community in talking about what's going really well in Boston and the arts, what our strengths are, what our challenges are and what we want to see for our future. And so we're about, halfway into implementing a, a 10 year plan right now. And one of the big goals of our plan was finding ways to better support artists in Boston and also attract more artists to, to the city. So one of the ways that we focus on doing that is through grant making. Um, the Opportunity Fund is a grant that is um, up to $1,000 and it really focuses on allowing Boston's artists to develop their career in ways that are meaningful to them. So that's really, um, you know, kind of putting the artist first and figuring out what that is and telling us what it is and helping us basically fund that. So it's a pretty open-ended concept. And we're not just interested in, you know, helping artists develop their career necessarily, but we're also really excited to help artists in Boston um, share their work with the public in a way that is free and accessible and really allows local artists to, um, to show the ways in which that they shine and allow the public to really enjoy those particular artistic experiences and events. Um, so this year, like last year and the year before, we have had $200,000 available for grants. And we have been using this grant basically to run a process where folks can apply all year round. They can apply, um, you know, we try to get back to people as quickly as we can. And we fund grants basically throughout the entire year on a rolling basis. 
So like I mentioned, um, grants are reviewed on a rolling basis. They're reviewed by staff on our team. And we really try to focus on basically, you know, um, giving, giving folks the benefit of the doubt that they probably or might have not applied for a grant before in the past. And so this is a grant where, you know, we're kind of hoping to get as much information about the reason you're applying as possible, but we're also really excited to give people an opportunity to learn about grant making and also, you know, take allow artists to take some artistic risk, risk in their career, whether it's doing something new or applying for something new. Um, so we're really kind of building off of a foundation of trust with this grant. And the application is on our website. So Christina will drop a link into the chat with their application and folks can apply online. And so later in this presentation, we'll just walk through the whole application so you all can see it and see if any questions come up for you. And this year we have a deadline to apply of June 4th. So our office's um, annual fiscal year ends on June 30th. And we have to make sure we get all of our payments and stuff out before then. So we have a deadline of June 4th, so we can make sure that we can get all of our grants out by the end of our fiscal year. So there are two kind of general broad buckets of ways that you can use the Opportunity Fund grant. And the first one is called the Artist Career Development category. So I'm gonna talk about that one first. So the kind of values that we bring to this grant um, and that we hope for in this grant are that we hope that it's approachable, that it is you know, relatively easy for people to apply to and to figure out you know, how, to, um, how to get the payment to them. We are really excited to, again, as I mentioned, allow artists to take risks in their career, do something new. We want um, applications to be really just defined by what artists need and we want to listen to artists in that process. And we want to focus on particular communities that haven't been as funded in the arts in the past and also have lower income artists and haven't had as many arts events. So we focus on particular neighborhoods, which is not to say that we don't fund events and artists in other neighborhoods, we just do prioritize some specific neighborhoods through this grant application process. And at the end of the day, the goal is really just to help bring free, accessible arts programming and also opportunities to artists throughout our city. So the Artist Career Development Grant has a few eligibility criteria. So artists who apply to this particular category have to live in the city of Boston. And we also have an income requirement for artists applying for this particular um, grant category. So as I mentioned, artists have to live in the city of Boston and an individual has to make under $54,950 a year. So that basically is just focusing on like what your income is every year. And if it's under that, you are more than welcome to apply for this grant. This particular category is really open-ended. So it can support, let's say, um, maybe you have a, if you're a visual artist, you might have a show coming up that you need to get some paintings um, framed for. So you could use this particular grant category to apply for something like that. Or maybe you're a musician and you're kind of, you know, thinking about maybe some technical um, equipment, you might need to better record your work at home. You could use this grant for that. Um, let's say maybe you're a dancer and you need some particular supplies to, um, you know, put on public dance performances. You could use this particular um, category for that. And also, if you just generally are kind of thinking about how you want to support your own professional development, whether that's going to a um, you know, some sort of convention or an online training, getting some sort of licensure, you could use this grant to support that opportunity. So just to give you all kind of an understanding of what area median income is, because we did mention the cutoff for income um, in that previous slide. So area median income is basically a, a kind of number that the city uses to say like what an average 
income is for people in the greater Boston area. And a household of one at 65% of what area medium income is, is $54,950. So the reason that we use this particular income limit is because we have a really limited, a relatively limited amount of funding that we can allocate to this grant every year at this time. And so we want to um, make sure that we're making grants to artists who, um, you know, who one who make kind of an amount of money that is pretty average in Boston for an artist or, or is basically, you know, they might not be making as much money as other artists who are at a higher income level. So we're really trying to focus on artists who who this um, grant amount can be really valuable to, can be really helpful to, and um, just kind of make sure that, you know, with the amount of money that we have, we're getting it to artists who, who make a relatively lower income. So just to give you all like a few examples quickly of folks who have received this grant in the past and what they've used it for. So this is uh, one particular artist who is a aerialist actually and a dancer. And he used um, the Opportunity Fund grant to purchase this particular um, aerial rig that he and his performance partner are, are using um, in these pictures. So this rig, they, um, they use one performing and it basically has allowed them to do more performances in their particular artistic discipline. Um, this artist, Liana, is a pianist who this past year wanted to purchase um, some technology to basically allow her to safely do more um, events in the public. So Leona plays piano and you know, was trying to figure out how to safely um, have her pages turned while she does performances. And Leona used this grant to purchase an iPad that allows her to basically read sheet music during performances. And she's been able to use this this past year to have lots of different performances, including several at um, senior centers where she's been able to share her work with seniors who, you know, have um, obviously been going through a really difficult time with COVID-19. Um, our last example for artist career development is an artist named Paula who lives in Roxbury and Paula has been making, makes clothes and uses materials that come from Africa. And she has been making, or when she came to us with this grant application, she told us that she had been making lots, hundreds and hundreds of masks for folks in her community. Um, and Paula was basically looking for funding to allow her to help keeping these masks, keep making these masks and making them for free and giving them out to free for people in her community. So Paula used this funding to um, basically purchase materials and allow herself to give these away in a way that was affordable for people, you know, in her neighborhood. So that's the artist career development category. And then the second way that you can apply for this funding is basically to support yourself sharing your work with the public in Boston. Um, and one thing I just wanted to kind of step back and mention uh, that I should have mentioned earlier is that when we use the word artist in the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, we mean that to use, uh, to we use that word to mean basically artists of any particular artistic discipline. So we um, acknowledge the fact that people often think the word artist is really kind of visual arts focused and some people you know might call themselves something something different like maybe they're a musician or a dancer and they might not necessarily use the word artist to describe their art form all the time but we want it to be very clear that artists of any discipline are welcome to apply for for this grant and for for I mean to really um, benefit from all of our programs in our in the mayor's office of arts and culture. So whether you're a dancer, a musician, a um, you know civic practice artist, um, a visual artist, whatever it may be, a graphic designer, you're welcome to apply to our programs. Um, and if you ever have a question about you know if your creative practice work might fit into the mayor's office arts and culture and our programs, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and we can have a conversation about it. So back to the community arts experiences and events category. So this particular way of using the Opportunity Fund is really focused on taking what 
what you do best, whether you're a teaching artist or a musician, or uh, you want to, you know, like have maybe a webinar or classes in your com community that, um, that share your art form. Maybe you want to screen a film if you're a film filmmaker. Basically, this particular category is just really focused on allowing you to share what you do best with, um, with the public in Boston so that they can really enjoy arts experiences. So you can be really, you know, well compensated for, for your work and um, that Bostonians can really get to know Boston's artists and um, the incredible work that they're doing here. So anyone can apply to this particular category. So you actually, you don't have to live in Boston to apply for this particular category of our grant, but the event or experience that you're planning must happen in Boston, or if it's a virtual event, it has to really focus on um, getting the word out to people who live in Boston. So maybe, maybe you're focusing on if it were virtual, and I'm just giving this example because of COVID-19 and, you know, there have been so many virtual events this past year and there still are. Um, if you were applying for something virtual, you would want to make sure you're working with maybe community partners in a particular neighborhood to get the word out to people who are Boston based. Um, so it has to be free to the public and it has to be accessible and open to the public. Um, and it can really be sort of anything that shares your work. So whether that's a festival or a concert or workshop, um, we're really kind of open to what that looks like. And it has to be, um, you know, somewhere where, where anyone can go. So a community center, a library, the outdoors, um, a school, if that's, you know, okay with the school you're partnering with. It just has to be open to the public. Um, that said, people, you know, you can like cap the amount of people you would have at your event if, if you need to, let's say if it's a class or something like that, your registration would just need to be free to folks who are attending it. And again, here we're focusing on prioritizing certain neighborhoods, but that doesn't mean that we don't fund um, events and experiences in other neighborhoods in Boston. We just are really trying to focus in our office on making sure more arts events like this happen in these particular neighborhoods. So we do encourage, you know, if an applicant has a project they're really excited to do, we do encourage you to consider maybe, um, maybe working on sharing that art experience in one of these particular neighborhoods. We just would encourage you also to, to be working in community with maybe a community partner in that neighborhood to help plan it and make sure that um, the programming is you know, culturally relevant to the people who live there and also that you have kind of a, a real sincere tie to that community um, when you're planning it. So just to give folks a little, um, a few examples of ways in which this grant category has been used before. So this past year, the um, Area Code Art Fair, which is an art fair that focused um, really specifically on sharing the work of Boston area artists um, in, you know, kind of in the Boston area, they used this grant to help fund sharing, um, to help fund that art fair and basically helping share all the work of all these artists um, in our communities. So the grant went toward, um, doing some of like the work that they needed around operating storefronts and paying for that. And also it went toward funding some of their public facing programs and events that went along with the art fair. Um, and then another example, and this one is actually coming up this week, uh, Jazz Boston, which is an organization in Boston that really focuses on jazz kind of musicians in Boston and the jazz community in Boston is hosting a online um, forum that's really focused on um, featuring jazz musicians in conversation about spirituality and culture and kind of how those two things have um, kind of play into their understanding of contemporary and traditional jazz and also you know the um, the industry's understanding of jazz. So that is basically kind of like a talk that anyone could attend and that's this Thursday actually. So I think at this point um, in the presentation, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you all the application and we're just gonna kind of walk through it quickly. 
and then we're going to come back to do some questions. So uh, right now, what I have pulled up on my screen is our Opportunity Fund application, which you can find a link to on our website, but um, is, is kind of housed in a web software called um, Submittable. So Submittable is a um, program that we use to manage all of our applications in our office. And it basically allows a person or an organization to create an account that's free. And then you can see kind of all the other, the opportunities that might be available through our office, whether it's maybe a grant application or um, a public art opportunity, you can apply for any of our programs there. So um, the Opportunity Fund application is unsubmittable. And the way we usually start our applications in our office on submittable is we include um, the grants guidelines right at the top so you can read kind of everything that I discussed today. Um, you know, the different eligibility criteria, the application cycle, what the grant amounts are, um, any reporting requirements. So you can kind of learn a little bit more about the grant before you get started um, actually diving into the application. So that's usually at the top and I'm just gonna scroll through that right now. And this just really consolidates like everything I'm presenting on today. So you can um, you know, find it somewhere. This is also all on our website. And to just to let you all know, you can find all of these, um, our application and our guidelines in Spanish as well, if you click um, this particular link that's on the application. So once you've read through it all and you kind of have an understanding of what the grant looks like and what you wanna use it for, you can start working on your application. So first, um, whether you're applying for the career development category or the community arts and um, experiences and events category. We ask just for some um, contact information, your name and some demographic information. Um, so people know the demographic information is not used at all in our grant review process. It's used basically so we can, um, at the end of our granting year or throughout our granting year, we can pull reports and kind of take a look at who's applying for our grants, um, who isn't, and how we can make sure that we're doing a better job um, serving particular communities in Boston. So we ask for your name, we ask for um, your artist name if you have one. So like if you go by a different name, maybe in your art form, you can share it there. And then we ask for your address. We ask for phone number and we ask for an email address. After that, we, um, we just ask if you've received money or awards from our office in the past year. And again, that's, that's not a question that would um, affect your eligibility for this grant unless you had already received this particular grant this year. Um, because this grant we allow folks to receive once a year. But if there's other ways in which you've received funding or awards from the city in the past year, we're only asking that question just out of curiosity to see how folks are engaging with different city programs. Um, so after that part, we have our demographic questions that I mentioned earlier. So we ask folks to um, kind of fill in, you know, what particular age range they're in, we ask folks a question to self kind of identify their race or ethnicity. We ask folks to identify um, their kind of level of ability. And we also in these questions give um, applicants the opportunity to say, I prefer not to answer if that is your preference. So once you've just checked those off, we, um, we ask you which type of grant do you want to apply for? And so again, you can apply for either the career development category or the community arts experience and events category. So we'll just go through um, career development first. So what I would do is I would click the category and then the application would basically show me all the questions for that category. So first what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the neighborhood you live in in Boston. So we have aggregated kind of all the broad neighborhoods in Boston here. You're gonna find the one you live in and you're gonna click that. So let's say, I live in Jamaica Plains, so I'll say JP. 
then we're just going to ask you to confirm um, that your income is less than the amount that we have our eligibility cutoff for. We aren't asking for um, proof of that in this application. We're just asking folks to, um, you know, fill out the application honestly. So if you are um, making under this amount of income, you would press yes. And then this is just sort of out of curiosity to see what kind of income levels our grantees have. And just to kind of better understand who our grantees are, we ask that you pick the range that your income is, is um, kind of falls in. And then after that, we really have like two main questions in the grant application. And one is to ask you um, to describe the opportunity that you're applying to fund. So this is where you would, you know, describe, let's say, if you were a musician, um, I'm really excited to apply for this grant because I need to maybe, um, let's say you're a pianist and you need to have your piano tuned. And um, this is just an example. Let's say, so here basically you would talk about, you know, what the opportunity is that you're applying for. So you would say, you know, I'm applying to get my piano tuned. I, um, that, you know, usually costs X, Y, Z amount of money. And um, I need to do this because I have a bunch of performances coming up and I, you know, haven't been able to do it in a while. And I need to make sure my piano is, um, is in tune so that I can practice well. So you would just describe that here and we would want, you know, just you to include any information that might be relevant for someone reading this application to understand what you're applying for. So I, I think something to consider when you're applying is um, the people reading these applications in our office are not, they might not know you, they, they might not, you know, kind of have the background on what you're applying for. And so just really trying to help like a stranger understand um, what it actually is that you are interested in and what you're planning for and why you're applying. Um, just kind of trying to make that as three-dimensional um, and full as it is in your mind is really helpful for people reading the application. And then we ask you to just describe why this particular um, opportunity is meaningful to your career. So that could be you know, I, if we want to go back to the example I was just using, I um, have a bunch of different concerts coming up and, you know, being able to perform is a great income generator for me that I really focus on in my career and having the um, supplies I need to rehearse and do that well really helps me plan for successful performance opportunities. Um, so that is, you know, really important to my career. So basically you would just use this particular space to tell us a little bit more about why what you're applying for matters to you and why it might matter to you at this moment in your career. Then we ask for a budget and this does not have to be, um, it doesn't have to be super detailed and it can also be estimates. We just ask you to kind of do um, the background research that you would need to help us understand what you're applying for. So if it's for a particular um, service or if you're applying for maybe a conference or something, sharing, you know, how much it costs and maybe a link to it or like an invoice is really helpful. Um, and we're just basically looking to see, you know, how you're going to spend the funding. So if you break that down for us um, through a list or through like a spreadsheet, that's really helpful for us in reviewing it. But um, it doesn't have to be super um, kind of super detailed. We're just really kind of trying to understand that as best we can how you're going to use the grant. And then we ask you to let us know what the total grant amount is that you're requesting. So you would just drop that in here. If it's, you know, $1,000, you would put $1,000 here. Um, and then we just want you to attach some examples of your work and a artistic resume if you have one. And if you don't have one, that's fine. Um, just images of your work is really helpful. You can also send us maybe a document where you, a paragraph or something where you just talk about, you know, what your artistic career looks like if you don't have a resume, that's also totally acceptable too. 
And so the end of our application is really more about kind of the payment side of things. So I'm going to go back um, to the community arts experience and just walk through that part of our application first. And then we'll end with talking about the payment process. So let's see, where are we? So with both um, applications, you would go through the demographic questions, your name, your contact information at the top. And then if you were going to apply for community arts experience, you would check off that particular or uh, fill in that circle here. And kind of similarly to um, the artist career development category, you just want to basically describe the event or experience you're planning in as much detail as you can. So if it's a, um, a free dance kind of um, performance that is in a park in, let's say this August or something, you would wanna describe you know, who is performing, um, who you're inviting, who, how you're engaging with the community to make sure you can get the word out, what your performance is gonna look like. You know, is it a 20 minute performance followed by maybe an opportunity for um, attendees to ask questions or hear more about your work? Um, so basically just giving us more information kind of about just what the event will look like on that day that you're planning it for. Um, in terms of the date for an event like this, we will ask you in our application for a date, but if you're still at a point where you're thinking like, you know, this is going to happen in August and I'm just kind of still narrowing down like a confirmed date, that's okay, we'll allow you to just put that in too. And what we will ask is basically that when you have more information, if you can share that back with our office so we can um, help you get the word out about it, we would love to hear about that. So after describing the experience, um, you're gonna just basically kind of turn toward letting us know more about where your event's happening. So you would go through this list similar to the career development grant and just choose the neighborhood um, where your particular experience or event will be taking place. So let's say JP and you're going to you know, tell us your date or your anticipated date um, or date ranges for the event. And then one thing we do ask for with this particular category um, that I mentioned earlier is that we, we ask that you have a community organization to partner with on planning your event. So the goal of this really is to make sure that as an individual artist applying for this grant, um, you know, who's planning in a, an event in a particular community, that you have help getting the word out and that you have, um, you know, maybe someone in the community who might be more kind of rooted in that community if it's not one that you're part of, um, and that you just have some support so you're not really doing this all alone. So we would ask you to just fill in the name of the community organization here. And that could be, um, that could really be like a whole different, you know, kind of diverse range of what organizations might look like. If your community partner is maybe a community-based organization that really focuses on um, serving people in your neighborhood, whether that's like a church or a YMCA or a school um, or a, you know, nonprofit that focuses on a particular, um, let's say, language community or something like that in your neighborhood, if it's an arts organization, um, kind of any organization that is in the community where you're planning this event is um, an appropriate organization to ask to partner with you. So then we would just ask for a quick, um, short letter from that organization, basically just saying, hey, we're so-and-so and we're confirming that we are partnering with this artist on this event. So it doesn't have to, um, it's not really a letter of recommendation. It's more of just a confirmation that the partner um, has actually, you know, said that they're willing and excited to work with you on the event. So then we're gonna ask you where it's taking place. And um, if it's virtual, you can mention that here. Um, and if you're also still figuring out where, like if it's, you know, maybe going to be in a park or something and you don't know um, if you have a confirmed location yet or not, you can just write that here. We're just looking to kind of understand, you know, specifically if there's a venue and, and where it might be taking place. And then we ask for a, if it's like an 
indoor venue or a, you know, someone's like yard or something, whatever that is, we're just asking for a letter from that venue to confirm that you can use that space. And again, that, that can really just be a few sentences, just saying, yes, we're totally, you know, on board and excited for this event to happen in our space. Um, and if you don't have a venue yet, you can let us know that here. And you can also let us know that in this letter area. Um, similarly to the career development category, we asked for a budget. We ask for the total grant amount. And we ask for your understanding of how the particular community where this event or experience will be, how, um, how, this, how this particular arts experience or event will better serve the community and their access to the arts. So um, just kind of spending some time thinking about how you are creating a positive impact in this community through sharing your work is something that we ask you to talk about in the application. And then if you have any work that you've started already, we would ask you to include it here. And that could be maybe like a flyer. Maybe you've hosted this event in the past. You can include something like that here. Um, if you have kind of any planning materials, we'd love to see that. Um, and then we ask, you know, if your particular event is showing a, a film, we just ask that you confirm that you actually have the permission to screen the film. If um, your event doesn't have a film, then that's fine. You would just say, you know, that I, I uh, don't have basically, um, that I'm not showing a film at my event. And then lastly, we would, um, we would ask if basically we would ask how you're going to accept this grant. And this um, part of the application is the same for career development category applicants and for arts experience um, applicants. So if you're using a fiscal sponsor, which is a, a nonprofit who would be accepting the grant money for you, you would check that off. Or if you're accepting the grant yourself, you would check that off here. So if, you're, if you were using a fiscal sponsor, you would have to have a letter just confirming, um, again, briefly that they are, um, that they are actually you know, going to act as a fiscal sponsor for you. And if you weren't, you would just move on to the next part of our application, which is signing up for a vendor ID. Um, a vendor ID is a, basically, it's a number that allows the city of Boston to, um, to pay a particular person um, money. So we ask folks to create a, um, an account with the city where we would be able to collect your payment information. So like your address, um, your name, if you want to do direct deposit, you would, you would decide and click a button there to make sure that you could do that. And kind of going through this process will generate you automatically something called a vendor ID number, which we would use um, through the city's payment processes to make sure that we can get funding directly to you. Um, and so you would have to do that whether you are applying for the community arts experience or um, the artist career development category. And if you were to use a vendor, your vendor would have, um, sorry, if you were to use a fiscal sponsor, your fiscal sponsor would have to make a vendor ID number instead of you. And then last but not least, we ask um, applicants if they identify as a women-owned or minority-owned business enterprise. And the goal of asking this question is um, really to see if we can help you get set up through city processes to be recognized as a women-owned or my, minority-owned business. Um, and that really is just, you know, your choice. If you would like to be part of that process, you can click yes here. Um, if you don't want to, that's fine. If you're not interested, that's totally fine. We just are trying to help folks who identify, you know, as small businesses, um, basically better be served by ongoing city processes that support women owned and minority owned businesses. And then you press submit and you have submitted an application to the Opportunity Fund. Um, and so what happens after that is we would review the applications and we would fund basically as many of them as we can. And um, hopefully that would be your application. 
So our application is online and there's um, kind of all the information I've shared today is also it's on our website. And we are really excited to get more applications, um, you know, before our June 4th deadline. Um, we are really hoping that you all can be partners in helping get the word out and help um, other artists, you know, whatever their discipline might be in Boston, kind of be aware of this grant. We know um, that a grant like this can be helpful at any time, obviously, but in this past particular, in this past year with COVID-19, artists have been so um, adversely impacted by loss of work um, in the arts in Boston and really around the world. And so we wanna make sure that um, artists know about this grant and utilize this grant to really just help further your career and help you kind of keep doing what you're doing best. Um, and I think with that, we will just, with the remaining 15 minutes we have, we'll turn toward questions. Julia, is it helpful if I just read some of them out to you? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we had a few um, that came in kind of at the beginning asking about residency. So I think it'd be good if you could just go over that again. One person asked, do you need to have residents specifically in the city of Boston to qualify? And then another person asked, how do you define city of Boston? Is this for the wider metropolitan area or not? Yeah, so um, if you're applying to the artist career development category, you have to reside in the city of Boston. Um, if you're applying for the community arts experience or event category, you do not have to. The event or experience just has to be in Boston. And um, the basically the, the way um, this is not open to people in the greater, or when, when we say um, the application is restricted to people who live in Boston, we, we don't mean the greater Boston area. Um, or greater metropolitan Boston area, we mean specifically the constraints of the city of Boston. So in our application, we do um, kind of show every neighborhood that is included kind of technically in the municipality um, of Boston. And those are all the neighborhoods who are eligible for this grant um, or neighborhoods that people, um, people who are applying to this grant um, would have to live in to be eligible for in the career development category. But again, um, for community arts experience or events, you do not have to live specifically in the city of Boston. Okay, and then somebody else asked if there are any grants that extend for residents of Cambridge as some of your competitions. Um, so, I mean, again, this grant can, um, can be utilized by folks who live in Boston if they apply to that category. But um, our office, let's see, I know that Cambridge does have some grant making programs through their um, cultural council for artists in Cambridge. And then also um, one thing that would be good for just everyone to know on this particular, on this um, webinar is that if, whether, whether you're eligible for one of our city of Boston grants or not, we do really welcome folks to um, take advantage of some of our, our other programs. So I put together a monthly newsletter that we can drop a link to in the chat um, that aggregates grant opportunities for artists, not just living in Boston, but living everywhere. So opportunities from our state's cultural council. If I were to see something that would um, support artists in the greater Boston area, I would include it there. Um, and basically that, that kind of is a nice way of um, finding out about like a lot of different opportunities, whether you live in Boston or not. Okay, and then the next question is, what does it mean that applications are reviewed on an ongoing basis, but that there's a June 4th application deadline? Yeah, so, so this application has been open since last summer and we um, have been reviewing applications basically like somewhere between every four, four to eight weeks this past year, just as, as often as we had kind of the administrative capacity to do so. The reason that there's a deadline um, at this point is that we have to receive all applications by June 4th, just so we can, um, we can close out our fiscal year um, in our office. So we have to make sure that we can, um, we can get everyone their grants before June 30th this year. So I appreciate that that um, language is kind of confusing and basically the rolling deadline, what it means is that we've been um, 
reviewing kind of grants on an ongoing basis all this past year, but our very final hard stop deadline is June 4th. And then there's one question asking how many opportunity fund grants are available? So um, we have $200,000 that is allocated to this grant. Most grantees apply for around $1,000 through the grant. So generally we are able to make around 200 of these grants per year. Um, and we still, I, I don't think I can say off the top of my head how much funding we have left right now, but we still have quite, quite a bit of funding left um, for kind of the end of year and um, you know anyone who still wants to get an application in. So I will say that you know, if you have an idea and you have a, a way of using the grant, um, I'd really recommend applying because we do have a good amount of funding left in this um, fiscal year. And do the community arts experience grants have the same income requirements and what is the funding amount for that grant? So that grant is up to $1,000 um, and you, um, you just have to have it in a the experience or event in a neighborhood in Boston. So there, um, there's not an eligibility requirement for um, where you live. And then there's also not an eligibility requirement for the amount of income that you make for that one. And then there's another question for that category. Can 501c3 performing arts ensembles apply for that grant? Yeah, that's a really good question. So this year we, um, we have been really focused on these um, applications being basically from artists or really focused on events that are um, supporting artists in the past. Um, so this grant has, we've had it for four years. And the reason why we've been so focused on artists this year is because of COVID-19 and we know how hard um, individual artists have been hit financially in Boston. In the past, we've, we've always allowed um, community arts kind of organizations and nonprofits to apply. And this year, basically the way we're, we're kind of framing that is we are still asking that the, um, the event kind of is led by an artist and the application is led by an artist. Um, but that said, if the artist, you know, is working with a nonprofit and um, is in partnership with them, they're welcome to kind of put on that event. We are just asking that our applications are kind of are from an artist um, and from an individual this year. And I think in a few of the examples I gave for community arts experiences, those examples were um, both partnered with organizations. So Area Code, the art fair um, was led kind of by an, an art gallery in Boston, but um, the event was really focused on sharing the work of Boston's artists. So that was completely appropriate within our eligibility criteria for the grant. And then Jazz Boston also um, was excited to basically allow artists to um, kind of be in conversation about spirituality and they had an artist that they work with um, submit the grant so that's kind of how they how those two organizations came into partnership with those particular applications okay and then for um, the artist career development um, they said for the information on submittable the maximum grant contribution is a total of 1500 artist career artist development 500 and supplies 1000. So I think that one is just about the breakdown of funding. Yeah, so this year we wanted to try to make as, basically make as many grants possible as, or make as many um, kind of allow as many artists as possible to um, receive this $200,000 of total funding. And so we did kind of um, make particular grant limits for, um, for like if you're going to a conference, we thought that the limit of $500 is like a little bit closer to what a registration would be for something like that. Um, whereas like materials might cost more. That said, I will say um, if you have multiple ways of using this grant that you'd like to include in your application, whether it's, you know, um, you have some personal projects that you could use materials for, um, and you have a conference or some sort of training opportunity coming up that you would like to apply for, we would welcome you to kind of combine reasons and um, apply for the higher grant size of $1,000. Um, we only were limiting the $500 level if it was like just, you know, I have this one particular opportunity for a conference and I'm only applying for that. 
And this one is about the community arts experience category. If you're doing a virtual event, do you indicate all communities and do you still need a connection to an organization in a Boston community if working from home? Yeah, um, so we, we would still ask you to have a community partner to help get the word out. Um, and I, I think that's a, a really good question. I mean, the event could focus more kind of on Bostonians in general. Um, so I think the way we have it set up right now in our application is for, for the um, event to focus on a particular neighborhood. Um, but one thing that I could do is just make sure that we modify that to say maybe just Boston generally also in case that is um, kind of the direction that would make more sense for your event. And this person saying, I work with a group of Boston-based film filmmakers who are looking to ultimately host a community arts event, wondering if we would all be able to apply for this grant for a combination of artist development or community arts experiences as determined by each individual filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say um, that's a question that comes up a lot. Um, if you were applying for a community arts um, experience grant, we, we would ask that the application is kind of more broad to just include the event generally. Um, that said, I mean, if the artists who are involved um, in the event have, you know, reasons related to it that they would like to maybe put in a career development application, um, we would welcome you to do that as well. Um, you know, we want as many individual artists to apply for this grant as, as possible um, in ways that could be useful for them. So I, I think like if there are different ways that people could um, support individual pro projects and um, individual applications, we would, sorry for that terrible noise in my window. Um, we, we would say that people are, are more than welcome to apply for um, kind of individual projects. Okay, and when we're selected for this grant, will it interfere to apply and be selected for another Boston.gov grant? No, um, definitely not. I mean, we this particular grant, if you receive it, um, you can only receive it once in a year, and um, a year in our in our um, kind of definition of what a year means is related to our fiscal calendar, which starts on June 1st and ends, or sorry, starts on July 1st and ends on June 30th. So just so everyone knows, that's kind of what like a year means to us. Um, but otherwise you would be more than welcome to apply to any other um, grant programs or opportunities at the city. Okay, and then there's a couple questions about specific uses that I'm gonna try and combine into one. And if we need to, we can separate them. But okay. is a recording for your original music a valid way for the grant? Can people who are trying to embark on an artistic career apply for the grant to get started, like people without an existing portfolio? And is hiring someone to assist with creating something po a possible use for the grant? Yeah, so um, yes, you can definitely apply for, um, in the first example, like if you're recording original music or something like that, that's a great use of this grant. And we've had uh, a lot of grantees over the past four years apply to um, put together albums and um, record their music. And that's actually a really frequent use of this grant. So definitely that's, you know, totally, that's totally acceptable for, for us and for this particular grant program. Um, you can also definitely use this grant to pay other people who might be, um, you know, partnering with you, whether that's through a community event or experience or through your career development grant. So, um, you know, feel free in your budget to um, include really anything that's supportive of the opportunity that you're pursuing, whether that's um, a mixture of things from compensating other people who, who you need to, you know, work with to support whatever you're working on, compensating yourself and making sure that you're thinking about like what you're your time is worth and um, how much you want to make sure that you compensate yourself in the grant budget. And then also, um, you know, any materials you might need or want to purchase through the grant. Um, and then I think I missed one of those three questions, Christina. Um, there's one about people who are trying to embark on an artistic career that oh. don't have a portfolio. So um, what we would, we would ask of an applicant like that is, we, we do want this grant to be um, accessible to people who are really early on their on in their career. If you, you know, 
we would like to see a few examples of, of the work that you've been making, whether that's um, through images or maybe like uh, a few brief recordings of something, or maybe even like some flyers from an event you might've held, or basically um, if we could, uh, we ask the people do share a few examples with us, but if those aren't, um, if you don't have many, if you don't have a resume, if you, um, you know, haven't had the opportunity to build that out, your kind of career out that much, that's okay. We just are looking for kind of better understanding, um, you know, if you've been able to start doing that a little bit. And also um, you can use our, our application to describe kind of, you know, the fact that you are emerging in your career and you are earlier on and um, kind of what your future goals are. So that is something that we would take into consideration as well when reviewing the grant. I think we only have one more question. Does the Community Arts Experience Grant have the same income criteria as the um, Individual Artist Grant, which I think they mean the Career Development one? Yeah, so um, the Artist Career Development Grant has the income requirement, but the Community Arts Experience and, event, and Events does not. So um, we only have the income requirement for the um, Artist Career Development category. I think we got everything. Awesome. Well, um, thank you all so much for coming today. Um, if we, you know, if you have any more questions that come up, we would really welcome you to be in touch with our office. I, um, so I included just like our general um, arts email address here where folks can reach out to and we'll do our best to get back to you quickly. Um, and then also I would really recommend checking out our website and just learning a bit more about the grant there. Um, and then just generally, if you go to boston.gov slash arts, um, and Christina, maybe you could drop that in the chat. Um, that's just our kind of um, our main landing page for the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture. Um, and we would just love to invite you all to, you know, take a look through it and get to know our different programs. Um, definitely sign up for both of our newsletters. Um, we have two, and you can sign up for both of them on our website. Um, one is kind of focused more on updates about the arts generally in Boston and updates from our department. And the other one is focused on um, resources specifically for artists, um, ranging from jobs to grants to ways to gather with um, people and network with people to um, calls for art, space, kind of things like that. So um, we definitely, you know, encourage you to sign up for both of them. And then um, I also have bi-monthly office hours. So if you ever have a question um, that we haven't been able to answer over um, email or you haven't you know, kind of been able to figure out from our website, I would definitely welcome folks to sign up for my office hours, which are um, on my staff page on our website. So you know, definitely feel free to sign up there and we can have more of a conversation. Um, and I think with that, that's all we have time for today, but I wanna thank you all so much for coming. Um, I really hope that you'll consider applying for the Opportunity Fund. I hope we can support your work. And you know, a reminder that June 4th is our deadline for this year. We will be reopening the grant next year, although we'll probably, we're probably going to be taking a few months off in the summer to just um, kind of evaluate this past year of grant making and see if there are any ways that we can improve it for next year, but we should have the grant reopened by the fall. So. If now is not a good timing um, for you to apply, you know, feel free to consider applying for next year. And um, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you all so much.